Bienvenidos a otro episodio muy importante, Fátima. Este para las personas que no se escuchan, quiero decirles que el día de hoy Fátima y yo estamos unidas por dos este, asientos Yay. en el mismo lugar. <risa> <risa> es el primer episodio que Fátima y yo estamos este, listas para presentar juntas a nuestra propia, a nuestra siguiente este, invitada especial en Empodérate de Chicanos por la Causa. Este, ¿Qué te ha parecido? Ese ya es el cuarto episodio. Yeah, it's my fourth episode and I'm very excited to be here with you, Marisa. Uh, I feel like we're going to have a really great episode. Marisa Calderón, bienvenida. Gracias. Empodérate. Qué, bueno, qué felicidad de estar aquí sabiendo que es un, una, uno, un momento pues, de disfrutar para tu que cuarta episode con nosotros, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm happy to be a part of it. Thank you. It's been amazing. So Marisa es la directora asociada de empoderamiento familiar de Chicanos por la Casa. En otras Long palabras. <laughs> the tongue twister right so there. Can see. <laughs> en otras palabras, este, eh, si alguien representa los programas que típicamente pensamos cuando hablamos de, de Chicanos por la Causa y de organizaciones como la de nosotros, pensamos en los programas en los que tú estás a cargo, pensamos en las personas que están allí recibiendo a nuestros clientes y muchas veces en los momentos más complicados este, o, donde, do, o cuando necesitan eh, el, el mayor empuje antes de que necesiten el resto de los otros o este eh, programas sí. y servicios que es para apu apoyarlos Apoyar. en su camino a la resiliencia. Pero cuando llegan a ti, este, están en un momento crucial. Um, yo ni sé por qué estoy aquí. Ya, ya pueden ver que María Jesús sabe de los programas. Gracias. ¿Para qué estoy yo aquí promocionando mis servicios? Uh, con, ahí, con, con esa descripción es su, más de suficiente. La verdad que sí, tenemos los programas um, por sea de bueno o malo, yo pienso que es por, por uh, una seña de que estamos, tenemos los programas cuando más se necesitan, cuando nos, nos llega la comunidad, cuando tienen más necesidad. Están muchas veces en crisis, ¿verdad? Um, y en vez de, lo, lo digo yo, no sé cómo decirlo en, en español, pero es un apoyo. Um, we're really big at CPLC in giving the, the um, um, hand up, mm -hmm. not a hand out. Yeah. Yeah. Antes de que lleguen a más situaciones críticas, estamos es, los centros comunitarios o asistencia familiar, esos son los programas um, para ver cómo les podemos asesorar para poder ayudarlos. Antes de empezar a desglosar esos programas este, y cómo te hacen sentir a ti, cómo te vemos el, el día a día <risa> eh, con nuestras familias, este, platícanos antes, estamos platicando con este, um, Fátima uh -huh. Uh -huh. la semana pasada, le digo, ¿qué le vamos a preguntar a, este, a Marisa? Le digo yo, well, eso es lo que yo sé de Marisa, entonces vamos a ver. I know. Este, oh, yeah. Recuerdo muy bien este, um, que te miré una vez con una camiseta y que decía Mazatlán y tenía la monita y, y traía la diadema. Y dije, ¡Oh, ¡ay, qué hermoso Mazatlán! Porque yo soy de Sinaloa. Entonces, sí. cuando yo la miré a ti, me like, ¡oh! Mi yes. estado de origen. Y le este, y digo, ¡qué padre ha sido! Entonces, me dijiste, ¡de allá soy! Ya tienes como <risa> dos años, años trabajando. Y yo soy like, ¡oh, my God! Have that yes. So, uh, platícame de, de dónde... Bueno, dónde tengo una familia. historia que no nada más es Mazatlán. Digo... Um, mi familia es de Mazatlán y también en Durango. Siempre mi papá es de Durango. Ah, okay. Tenemos a Verónica okay. aquí, este que um, apoya. Y, you know, en, en mi niñez, este, sí nací en California, pero vivimos en México. Um, y también um, la mayoría de mi niñez también eran en Durango, en Gómez Palacio, en Mazatlán, ya de adolescente. Pero la mayoría de mi vida de adulto, ya de prepa, fue aquí, mm. en los Estados Unidos. Um, y así fue, pero como cuando uno va a Mazatlán, cuando uno pasa tiempo en México, ¿verdad? Sí. Nosotros somos, no hay más mexicano que el inmigrante que está en Estados Unidos. Ok, like you are, have so much pride of where your family is from, where you've been. You know, it's what I always say when I go back home, my home away from home. I'm not like, a, I'm not doing touristy things. Everyone's like, oh, you're going to go here, you're going to go there. I'm like, 
no, I'm just hanging out with my folks in, in our house and with our family and our relatives. Um, and so I was just saying that my parents just got back. Mis papás apenas llegaron anoche con todo el tilichero, todas sus cosas y todo lo que nos trajeron, que el marlin, que la machaca, you know. No puede faltar la machaca. Dividing everything up. And I'm like, I'm so excited. I told them, you know, les dije que, íbamos a, que iba a hacer esta entrevista porque yo acá para impresionar. Le digo, Ajá. pues mañana me van a entrevistar. You know, we still, we still do that. So um, just, I think it's just part of that helps define my story and that way I can connect with so many of our migrant and immigrant families when they're here making the most of it, doing the best they can. And they still, you know, they miss back home. Sí, they sí, miss sí, back no. home. ¿En qué parte viviste aquí? ¿En qué parte en Estados Unidos creciste? En Los Ángeles. So yo nací en Bellflower. Uh, vivimos en um, Downey, en Bellflower. Tengo familia en Whittier. Um, you know, por ahí en Los Ángeles, sí. Ahí y luego nos movimos bastante porque mi papá tenía varios trabajos. Um, y luego otra vez nos regresamos a México y luego nos regresamos a acá, Arizona. Hay algún mucho momento, de back and forth. Right. Mm -hmm. Sorry. ¿Hay algún momento en el, que, en el que tú, en ese que movías de un país a otro o de una ciudad a otro, que tengas un, un momento en particular que te definió? Ay, yo nada más me acuerdo en mi niñez que tenía que aprender inglés. Mm -hmm. I went to school in Mexico to learn, and I had to learn English in Mexico. My mom Baby. was very big about Quiero que, quiero que agarren bien el idioma para cuando nos regresemos otra vez, estén bien. We, we can assimilate. And that was some, a moment like, what do you mean assimilate? Like, I just want to be me. Like, what? You know, so I think we, like some of us in our generation, que somos de, uh, there's that saying, uh, ni de aquí ni de allá. Uh -huh. And a long time ago, I stopped, I said, no, 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 soy de aquí y de allá. Yes. So no more ni de aquí ni de allá. Soy de aquí y de allá. Just to, just to own that, that I can be in both spaces because growing up, I had such a hard time. That's a little, that's why I said, no, I don't want to talk about me because there's just some stuff there. <laughs> I don't want to talk about me. No, but I'm so glad that you're talking about it because that's something that I resonate with and especially as more people in the Latino like um, community is growing in the U.S. We're from de aquí and de allá. Sí. So it's something that a lot of people resonate with and not everyone or not anyone, but like someone like you can share that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I got tired of being defined. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, you know, I talk about with my with my friends or colleagues, like we're going to create our own table. Like I'm tired of waiting for a table for me. So we're going to create our own spaces and our own table And we can be both. It's not and or, it's both. Mm -hmm. Es increíble cómo eso te libera. Yeah. Porque sientes una presión de Ay, que sí. tienes que escoger o tienes que ser lo mejor en ambos lados. Mm -hmm. right? Tienes que sentir que te estás asimilando o eres parte de la comunidad donde vives, pero también este, que cuando regresas a ver a tus primos, tu español y todo, además que vaya con eso, oh, que sí. también es, este, continúen, sí. que te continúen viendo como parte de ese lugar también. Sí. Entonces creo que a veces no, 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 no pasamos por un proceso, ya sea con algún grupo <ríe> que te comprenda <risa> y sientes que eres la única que está pasando por eso, y que sientes presión de ambos lados este, y que sientes que no perteneces a sí. ningún lugar hasta que de repente sales y dices, ¿sabes qué? It's my own table. Yes. I can be both. I yeah. can be Mexican. Y puedo ser estadounidense mm -hmm. y, y puedo amar. Me doy permiso de, 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 de apoyar, de ser parte de... Este, es, y, y eso se, es lo padre. De los dos uh -huh. lugares. Eso es lo padre. O sea, yo siempre digo, yo, pues yo tengo mis papeles, documentos, yo tengo doble nacionalidad. We, we all, mm -hmm. my family, we all have, have that. So what more do we need? You know, um, I think it's, that's the great part instead of seeing it as a deficiency. You know, ahora pues 
regreso a México y encantada de ver a mis, a mis parientes y ahí estoy yo la bilingüe. <risa> <risa> Ahora sí, ¿verdad? Ahora sí. Um, ayudando en ciertas cosas, que información o acá también lo bueno que puedo conectarme con mi comunidad que tal vez no habla inglés y hay más o menos. Y, y yo le doy muchas gracias a Dios que tengo esta ex experiencia porque también me ayuda a practicar mi español. Mm. Have you noticed that? Even if you're not fluent in English, I want to tell my, my, my young people, it's okay. As long, you know Spanish because you have certain, we all have certain Spanish words, just as long as you can kind of make the effort to listen and you make the effort to try to communicate because that's one of the things with my young people at, my, at work. Um, they get nervous when they talk to families with the parents. I'm like, this is how we're going to practice. We're going to, it's okay. There's no judgment here. I just don't want you to feel like you, just because you can't say that word correctly, I am not judging you. Trust me. I'm trying to learn Nahua. And I'm like, I we're struggling, I struggle it with struggling with it. So, um, I I'm think so glad you said that. Yeah. Because, it's, like, not, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> that is something I relate to so much because, um, like how we were talking about like fitting into the mold and making our own table. I speak bilingual where I love to like hear it and communicate with people. But I feel um, like deficient in my own Spanish. And so that's why I usually respond in it's okay. English. Yeah. But I know that I got to give myself grace. And that is something See. that I'm working towards. And you're halfway there because you are, you're understanding if at least a little bit of it to communicate. That's halfway there. Don't let it discourage you. I think we get very caught up in some of these antiquated norms of this tienes que hablarlo así de oh. but you know but también yo no también yo no logro entender muchas frases que son muy académicos mm -hmm. yo no claro ¿qué, claro ¿qué claro sí ¿qué es eso? Um, pero es algo para mí yo lo veo así esa es, esa es mi opinión Sí, yeah. eh, eh, estoy de acuerdo. Y creo que Fátima no se da suficientemente crédito porque creo que si sí, algo, aparte de otras muchas cosas, nos conecta a las tres, es que de alguna manera las tres hemos sido este, traductoras, sí. <risa> hemos sido <risa> consejeras, <risa> a social as first generation, yes. Yes. nurses at home, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Este, as first generation, este, we get to do all that. And all I say we that. get because that is really what got us. We're <laughs> we are right now <laughs> I filled out all the documentation for my mom I was, she was like what does this say and I was like well this says like it's like for free lunch at school and she's like oh, okay sign for me and I'm like okay <laughs> so yeah honestly I did all the signatures for Listen, my mom <laughs> if you ever want to relive that experience come to the community center because we're still doing that <laughs> I still have las que las abuelitas o las tías que vienen al centro comunitario y que nos traen su correo y que no, no lo entienden they don't understand their mail You know, and it's, we have, there's been this joke that my colleague Luis had says, like, sometimes the mail is to get, a, open up a credit card account. And he's like, no, no quiere abrirla, señor. No, 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 pero si lo quiero. And this is elderly woman, like, si, sí, yo quiero firmar. You know, I'm like, no, señor, no está bien. Um, we have, you know, when he was telling us that, that, that um, incident or, you know, uh, with, a, with an elderly community member. But we still have that. We still, and we're happy to do it. Like, I think in my younger years, I would complain. <laughs> <laughs> But I am so thankful for those experiences because now I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad I can. I get it. I get it. It's all coming around. And I hope that people that are listening or watching that they understand that it, it, it'll make sense. Be patient. <laughs> it'll make sense. Yes, eventually you'll, uh -huh. you'll get there. Este... Antes de llegar a ese piolcito, eras este, maestra so, también. I was an y... early childhood educator, contracted. I did contract work with the Department of Education. Uh -huh. So I trained early childhood teachers around the state, kindergarten through third grade. Si le escuchan la voz de maestra, muy <laughs> lenta, con mucha paciencia, you know, explica. Social worker heart. <laughs> yes. Um, and so I did that for, I think, over three years uh, Phenomenal, phenomenal experience where I got to play in the classroom. I got to connect with young people, not just within the kindergarten through third grade, but we would do projects. How we would show the teachers how to do projects with the seniors in high school and the kindergartners. And I had a joke about because kindergartners was like my favorite like age time that that grade because it's they're so curious at that time and 
um, I would say when I worked with my teens, it's like they're tall kindergartners. They're just taller kindergartners, <laughs> you know, just a lot of the social and emotional things that our teens are experiencing at that time is the same very much so for my young kiddos. It's just, you know, I, I feel like the kindergartners are more verbal. They'll tell you <laughs> versus the older <laughs> kids are more episode. closed and introverted sometimes with their feelings. Um, so that I always say like that work really, really helps set me up for the work I do today. Now I work with a lot of high school students and I'm going to tell you, I was very scared. Me daba mucho miedo con los adolescentes porque yo era lo peor. <laughs> okay, yo lo admito. Yo era una adolescente bien sangrona, tenía muchos problemas and it was the whole, I, I couldn't, I wasn't, I didn't know me. I was sad, mm. mad. So I, I couldn't fit in, you know, mm. that, that whole part where I'm here, I'm like one of the only five Mexican kids. Everyone's white. Um, and I'm trying to see where, who's my people, right? Where are my people at? Well, my mom doesn't want me hanging out with these people. And then these people menos. And so it was really hard for me during that time. So when I got to this place of now I'm going to be doing more work with teens. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Teens are hard. They're mean. They're, I know they're mean. I, I was mean. I know. You know, and it's just, it's muy interesante. Me se llama, mira, ya ves, ya ves, ya ahora, ya, you know, how it turns. And I'm just really grateful for that experience because we have the saying um, in my field in early childhood where we say, be the adult you needed when you were a child. So be the mean. adult you needed when you were a child. Yes. And that's what I think about. I'm like, you guys, remember, are we being the adult that we need to think about it? Look, is this, you know, this is these behaviors are, are you know, connection seeking behaviors. And we t just use that a lot of that language mm -hmm. as a as What a type parent. of language is that? Like when you think about treating them as how you wanted to be treated, like what, in what ways do you mean that? Um. I'm not going to, I think they deserve to be heard um, at where they're at. I think we can be really quick to dictate how they should be behaving. Mm. It's always, I always find it that I'm just trying to justify the why. Listen, th this is why I need you to, in this, in this space, we use this language. I try not to control things outside of like the community center mm -hmm. is its own little um, like microcosm, like its own little community, right? Mm -hmm. And I say, okay, aquí en este, en este centro nos hablamos así. This is how we show respect. I don't say nice. I say we're going to be kind because nice can be abstract. Mm. I mean, we can go through a whole parenting <laughs> yes. thing, right? I love it. But um, because that's the early childhood piece of me, like a lot of those concepts we use with our, with my team, with um, high schoolers, with young college kids of our social, our emotional intelligence, you know, I can't always fill your bucket, your emotional bucket. At some point, it's got to come from you. Tú tienes que tener las ganas. Mm, yo no, yo no te puedo empujar. Tú, at some point, that tú tienes que tener esas ganas of doing this, of accomplishing this. And I think it's just trying to let them know it's okay if we, and I don't want to say fail, but I just say, it's okay if you mess up. We just try again. Because I think there's a lot to learn from those mess ups. Sometimes I, I don't like saying failure because those are gifts. Those are mm -hmm. gifts. Like, oh, I messed this up. Okay, let's do it again. I, I used to have a mentor that would say when we would do art and it would get super messy. She's like, it's not a mess. It's creative chaos or something. She would like, <laughs> she would just change it for me. I'm like, okay, because I was, I'm very neat in my stuff and um, the way I, I do my work. And I had to learn to like, let you just let it go, let it flow. Um, really let the kids guide you. We're very much youth driven, community driven. We, I mean, I really, Maria Jesus would know, like we, we work really hard in being in the barrio and talking to people. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something that can kind of got lost with the pandemic. It's very easy to be a laptop warrior. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very easy to be a laptop warrior. But when you have to face that person in front of you, hey, that's a whole different interaction. And we have to learn, learn that piece still. 
no matter how much virtual stuff we do, there's still something valuable about developing like our interpersonal skills. And I think that's for me, that's really been something big with my my young people that we work with, because a lot of them come through our community centers, through internships, people that are already maybe in college that want that get to get some community hours, um, parents that need help communicating with their teens, just the, the programming that we do as well. Mm-hmm. How is your approach different with the generation? I'm like, te escucho hablar que le ayudan a la abuelita o la señora sobre su tarjeta de crédito. Then you have to talk to the amanecer youth um, and make sure they're engaged. Yes. <laughs> that is so different. Tienes a different. first, second generation, unos monolingüos, other, no. So, and even within your staff, right? Yeah. There are young people. I'm really glad that... Um, And it was very intentional that we have a team that is representative of the communities that we serve. So we, yes, we serve a lot of Latino identified communities, but I have my Afro Latinos, you know, I have my black community on there. We have our seniors and our young, our, our Gen Z's, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, for my younger ones, I, I'm really, I'm very much about learning from them. Because that's the only way. And and then going, excuse me, going from there, hope if they're open to it, depending on the young person, I, again, I always approach it. And, you know, I say a lot of times my script is, can I, can I, can I show you why? Can I tell mm-hmm. you, can I show you why I think this? Can you give me a minute? Can I, I always with that permission from them mm. so that it's not as something that I'm just coming down and hammering down. This is why, because it's my role. Right? And I think that shows like how you said, like treating each other with respect and that like um, different generations can learn from each other, whether you're older or younger, you can each learn from each other because each one has like different perspectives yeah. about how each of them were born or raised. And then I love that you really, um, like teach down on or not teach down, but like teach on communication, like the power of communication and treating people or kids, how, you know, you would have wanted to be treated as a kid, because I feel like communication is a very big, important skill. And it's a soft skill that sometimes can be overlooked. Mm -hmm. Um, But it is very important because now growing up, my mom was, and my dad were always like working first generation. They were working like 40, 60 hours a week. And so I didn't have as much communication as I could have with having parents being at home more. And I think now I'm learning that communication is a big part in like in friendships and just relationships in general, professional and personal. So I love that you do that for your kids. So that's a 21st century skill, Mm -hmm. the soft skills. I, one of, part of my past work I did, I'm, I used to be an edupreneur, I call myself because I used to have a little side hustle <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I got to work with some amazing programs at ASU actually through their small business, like incubators. Mm-hmm. My husband's connected with ASU, their research arm. And I was able to connect with some, some of these amazing, um, young, young people and through those like tech talks that I would be a part of and I would participate in. As far as like to learn, simply, simply in the in the angle of learning, because I always wanted to know how do I prepare kids. I need to know what's hap- what's happening for the future. What's what's on in the future, so I can teach my teachers. Hey, this is coming up. We need to learn these type of skills, or we need to teach these skills to our kindergartners, so forth. And the soft skills were huge. It, I remember somebody from Google. I remember hearing. Like you can be amazing at your job, okay? You are hitting the numbers and goals and all of the things. But if you can't get along with others, forget it. You're gonna, you're not gonna last there. If we can't learn how to collaborate, even if there's a we don't like each other, I would say we don't have to like each other. We don't all have to be BFFs. <laughs> and that's you know we don't all have to be BFFs. And I'm we could I, just be F's. and I don't or <laughs> team members. You know? And I'm not for like fake kumbaya stuff. I'm like <laughs> I get it, you know. But we need to learn how to get along because at the for jobs we have a the mission. As long as it all comes goes back to the mission, the values, right of that endpoint, we're serving the same community. And I feel like with our with the soft skills, that's a big part. That's my thing. 
okay, I know you don't like you don't like them, and I know she looked at you a certain way or whatever. <laughs> but we got to get through this. Can we, how what can we do to help us? You know, get, um, get along. As as for me, I always say, okay, so you got it out. You don't like each other. Great. We're out. We're being honest. Okay, well, let's figure out how to get how to work together. Like, mm-hmm. I'd rather that be put up front for me mm-hmm. <laughs> than the guess. Like, what, so, what's going on? What? So, 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 you know, so, so. then let's just put it out in front and be honest. I'm not saying that I'm going to be okay with it. I'm always going to figure out what can we do to help them get along, you know, because that's a skill that we have to have. Not You're not always going to get a choice who you work with in the future. Um, and I, I, I feel like there's some folks maybe doing some of this solo hustler work or they think that they don't have to work with certain people. Guess what? Unless you have a million dollar idea, maybe, but there's always going to be those circumstances. We we just have to learn how to do that, how to cooperate with each other. It helps build character mm-hmm. as well, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's also empowers you that you're able to navigate different, different situations yeah. with a diverse group of individuals, wherever you um, find yourself in. Um, <clears throat> it's the 25 years in this area plus. <laughs> we were talking about, <laughs> she started when she was five. <laughs> we were talking about amazing. that. And I was so, um, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh man, that means, hey, I think, I think I'm bothered by that. Because then, <laughs> then no. I have to, then people know that I'm like approaching my fifties and stuff. And I'm like, uh, I don't like my, like, then I, it's my age. And that's just kind of where I'm at. Like, okay, we have. Fifties yeah. are the new thirties. Thirties are the new twenties. And I'm totally cool. I, I, I tease. I totally tease. I, I I was just sharing like, yes, I've been in the social service. Like I've been in this industry for a long time. I so like I started in social services and education because in my high school, my senior year, I got in trouble and I had to do mm. community service hours. And without disclosing too much. Um, without exposing yourself. Yeah, oh without exposing myself. My parents didn't really know. Um, I was already an adult my senior, like my the senior mm. when I graduated. And um, so I did community service hours, but that was in combination with like a service project I had to do for school. And from there, um, and I still see her, uh, Michelle Luenia is uh, my, men- my first mentor at the Boys and Girls Club. Mm. So I started like that. And then from that's just kind of how I ended up getting involved in like nonprofits and grassroots work and working with youth and families and amongst all of the other little trouble stuff I would get into as well. But um, from that, I did, I was volunteering. I did work at the school district. Back in the day, we had ESL, English as a Second Language. They had technicians back then to help translate in the classrooms. And I got in like that and... It just kind of snowballed from there. <laughs> also, it all started from you getting in trouble to the <laughs> yeah, it's turning like your situation. career, your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You dedicate your life. That's to. what I was like. I was really awful. <laughs> I was a high school kid. Oh, that's that. It just she, shows how everything happens for yes, a reason. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, and it's like another reason why my mom would like as any chance she got. And I don't. And I don't. It's I get it. She was she was working a lot. <laughs> Uh, me mandaba de regreso a México. Te vas con tu abuela. Ah. And I'm like, oh. te corrija. and I was like, okay. And I loved it. You know, I played like I hated it, but <laughs> I loved it. I got to go. I, you know, who doesn't want to go back to Mexico and have fun and do the fiestas and all the things. Es cierto, verdad? Y está yeah. gozando la de allá. Y la comida también. Mm-hmm. And everything's cheaper, so I would think I was more wealthy because then right here I have a dollar and I go to the candy store and you're like... Oh, oh I know your money uh, will last longer. But then you get right? and then you go to the candy store, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can buy so much more. <laughs> so, parte de, aparte de, you know, your your experience in, in, in social work y, y education, in education, siempre te he visto como an advocate above all. O sea, cuando quiera sea que ha habido la oportunidad de que estamos conversando, it was oh, it's always like, but what's going to happen with my families? How are we going to support our families? Yeah. And and what's going to happen with the situation now? Because it's going to impact, you know, their surrounding. I know that. Um, so how uh, do you feel that that voice in certain aspects, and as, as you've seen in your career, is so important to have that at your own table or yeah. when you're pulled in into a table? You know, I... I 
reflect on that question. And when you guys were asking me, um, because I remember before I just didn't feel like saying anything. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, uh, it's not going to, it's not going to help. But now I feel like it's any little small increment of progress is progress. So even if, you know, when I, when I advocate, I'm like, Ay, pero que va a pasar con mis familias? Um, even if it's a small change of progress, I think that we have, I, I take that as, as a little win or it's, well, it's on notice. Okay. It dis, I wasn't able to change it, but I put them on notice. Mm. Someone's watching and someone's holding them accountable. That's how I, I look at it now. Um, is that I'm absolutely going to be a, uh, I'll be a self-proclaimed fierce advocate for my families, for my youth. Um, because I, I, amongst the work I can do, that's, that's the minimum I can do is use my voice, use my energy, um, my circumstance, the privilege where I'm at now to bring attention to certain, you know, issues that we need to address. And if it can't be addressed, okay, but I just want to know why. Why can't we address it? <laughs> um, because at the end of the day, oftentimes, in, at least in my work, I will hear about things, you know, when you're in the, in the barrio at our centers and, or I just was at my family assistance office and our doors are always open. Um, I will hear about the good and the bad and the ugly mm -hmm. at my app mm -hmm. in our lobby. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, this is like the 10th one that we hear about this. What is going on? How can we address this? Because I do think it's important to use the CPLC reach for us, the Chicanos por la Causa. We have, we're so blessed. I want to honor this, this entity. It, it is a 54 plus legacy entity. I, I don't think a lot of our young people realize mm -hmm. that. Um, we, like, I feel like we have a, um, I don't want to say burden, but we, you know, responsibility. we have a responsibility to so much of the movimiento that got us to this place. I just, for me, I'm just like, no, no, no. I need to make sure we advocate for this. Cause I just feel it's a slap in the face to the movement. If we don't say anything. <laughs> um, so I, that's kind of how I, I take that. I do my best to advocate where I can, um, you know, if is it working? I think so. I don't know. And in, in in my small little world, I feel I'm gonna say it is. Um, people will let me know if it's not, or I need to do more. You know, and that's what I'm here for. I think that's where change happens, though. Like sometimes we feel so overwhelmed by some of the things that are happening. So I always say, well, let's start small. What can we do right here? Mm -hmm. What can we do in in our in our little community first? Who who do we need to call? Who can we bring attention about this, this, this need, this issue? Um, because as much as we try to pretend that we can be siloed, we're all so connected. We're all so connected. So what would you tell um, people that are considering joining social service? Run! <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it that mm. you would... What advice would you have appreciated before diving in yourself completely? And did you think it? you were going to be here 25 plus years? Not here necessarily. What's interesting is that when I was doing like coursework at school, like I used to be in Mecha back mm. in the day. And um, I used to, I knew about CPLC through that work and I always was like, man, I, I wish I, I need to figure out, like, how do I, how do I get there? But I felt like I wasn't, um, um, como se dice, que, que it, I was not enough. Oh, wait, so did you manifest? Yeah. Like, being part of CPLC? I, I don't know about if I, be, but I knew I wanted to do some type of um, advocacy work. Oh, I simply, I always, I needed to figure out how to do advocacy work. But you had envisioned yourself being part of some type of Chicano to some type yeah. of that, because I was just, um, everything around me was just starting to tie it more and more of where I needed to be. Um, and as much as I was like, no, I'm not good at that. No, I'm not enough. Or, you know, um, it just kind of ended up where somebody said, oh, look at this. This position's opened up. You should, this is you, Marisa. This is all you. 
Um, so when I was in doing Mecha and stuff, I actually would learn about CPLC more so because Andres was um, one of my best friends. It's his un uh, uncle. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember um, this work and my, one of my teachers that I worked for, she used to always tell me um, I did like some um, school hours or whatever for credit at one of the, I mean, it's the public schools. And she used to always tell me, Marisa, we're going to go do the great protest or we're going to go do hang posters. And so that kind of also, and then in my early childhood field, um, there's an agency called first things first. Mm -hmm. And when, bef before it was first things first, I was part of the committee that started it. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, but I saw nice. that you, <laughs> you so, won an award in 2016. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but that was after. So like, I, I remember protesting. I was always protesting and picketing <laughs> for, for the, something of, you know, immigrant rights, SB 1070. I style with my white shirt and everything <laughs> all the way around the Capitol, you know. Um, and I remember with First Things First, there was a tobacco, that was a tobacco tax. And I remember yelling at some bureaucrat and I almost got arrested um, because they didn't want to pass that bill. We were all at the Capitol, all these early childhood teachers. And I remember I had my little girl, my oldest at the time, um, Salma, I believe, and and this day, I think you I would heard. bring her to the rallies. Oh yes, oh, she, she has teach to learn. Yeah. Yeah. She has Advocate. to learn. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it wasn't like dangerous. Okay, people. <laughs> my husband's like, no, you cannot take Valentina over there. So um, that kind of, I've always been very passionate about just the advocacy and vulnerable children, especially children. We have there's this whole thing about children have rights too, and they deserve to be in a community free of violence, right? Um, they. <gasps> Well, I want to thank yeah. you. So, so I know we can go on and on. So thank you. <laughs> no, I want to thank you for picketing that day. I want to thank you for speaking out that day. Um, my daughters were um, proud benefits of First Things First. The child care where they went is across the street si. from um, our Central Park now. See. Si. So did and my sibling. Phoenix day. So yeah. thank you again. Yeah. <laughs> and it's amazing um, the level of of care Um, eh, la instrucción en general que las daban, cómo los preparaban realmente, sí. los preparan a estos niños para empezar mm -hmm. este kinder and then take off from there. Sí. Este, saber que había este currículum que seguir, que había ciertas accountabilities. So th there are certain expectations also from parents as well. Um, but uh, thank you so much because that um, helped my daughters who's now in a freshman um high school so and cool then the year old so and yes yeah. and they and, and and they loved um that place and um first things first was always very accommodating yeah. in providing different um as the parent education for us as new parents as well so it's really helpful so thank you for yeah. advocating thank you that's so that. cool to hear and, yeah i mean it's the, there was other people but i was part of that the local um Valley of the Sun, like the, that's what it's called, the chapter for Phoenix. That <laughs> it was a crazy idea, and I'm just like, wow, look at how, look at how it's just boomed. And I'm, and it's really, it's, it shows that we should think of kids as people, and I think sometimes we forget that, even our teens. Es cierto, es cierto. And then even adults, we're still kids, so it goes both ways. Like I'm yeah, at heart, does. we'll always be. <laughs> so speaking of kids at heart, este, conociendo todo lo que pasa en un centro comunitario, yeah. este, con todas las cosas que tienes que absorber, like a social worker, um, and then like a manager, este, um, what do you do for fun? Oh, I, <laughs> well, um, I think I've made it a point to incorporate the fun within my work, right? within this work. Um, and I can't do this work with, unless it's fun. I, because we do such serious stuff. <laughs> it's very heavy at the end of the day. Um, you know, I, I just was, came from one of the, one of our locations and I'm hearing these stories and it's tough. And so we make sure Uh, for me, I try to take that mental health day every month, at least to disconnect. I love my walks. I'm always down for happy hour. Happy hour. Anybody right. let me know. <laughs> um, 
I, golfing? Are you down for oh golfing? Oh my gosh, <laughs> Maria Jesus. I, if, if you want to take me golfing right? again, I will be down for golfing. Yes. And that was super fun. Um, like now I, I totally understand the hook now. Marisa y a mí nos tocó ir al primer este torneo eh, de Latina. Sí, no, sí. Latina, este. Um, anyway. Latina Strong. Latina Strong. Um, y este, and we were like, together and like, oh. I guess we're partners. Like, do you know I don't know? I mean, like, do you know I don't? Two people are keep together. Big mistake right there. Right, and let's just have fun. Y después mire como un meme, así como que I'm like, I'm the golfer that comes in just for the fun of it. Not <laughs> because I know anything. And we, we were pretty good. I know, right? Like, who would have thought? Who would have thought? Listen, I, everybody saw it. I was like, did you all see that? I totally hit it over there. Like, It was super fun. So golfing, I would definitely do that again. Um, I like doing the book clubs. I'm, I participate in like the Brown Book Club. I don't know if you heard of it in, on Facebook. Just to kind of learn and support local um, BIPOC authors. You know, um, awesome. I can't do the paper one, but I'll do the I read from my tablet. Oh, I'm an audiobook person. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, or audiobook too. Um, you know, just a little bit of that and... I really enjoy listening to podcasts as well. If I can get my learning on somewhere when I'm in my walks um, for fun. But I, I, I think I need more fun. We were talking about this before <laughs> where now I feel like, okay, I really, this is, this is the self-care era. This is the <laughs> self-care era, you know, and um, stepping more into that because I honestly, I, I really like going to work. I like Being with my team, um, thankfully, we all get along. Like, <laughs> you know, it's. I think it helps. It helps um, ground me. Oftentimes, when I'm just hanging out with the kids, we're coloring or playing basketball. Mm. Um, you know, this is kind of the most stressed up I usually get because I know me, and I know I'm very hands on when I'm at my community centers. Um, you know, we're making sandwiches, we're bagging produce. One of the things that I really am intentional, just being available for families also once a week, at least to get that face time that they need. Um, and it's not to say that they're not getting their needs met by my staff, but, you know, just hearing about their small celebrations. I love that. I'm like, oh, que padre. A poco, de, you know, this, this and that. Ay, que bueno, señora. Que padre que, le, que puso eso, que logró eso. Um, so those are kind of the small moments of joy. Like, give me the small moments of joy, for sure. Yeah. You have to be there to appreciate them, right? Yeah. Be present and saying, porque a veces que se nos pasan esos momentos y, and, and we're like, wait, that happened? I need to celebrate it. Yes. And it's a constant este, um, learning about speaking with your, and, and, and considering your soft skills and then, mm -hmm mental health playing a role and, 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 and making sure that you are, are taking in all those great moments that make your life um, so beautiful. Mm -hmm. este, y ahora se dan cuenta porque es que tenemos casi un año queriendo um, to get Marisa. So she finally, <laughs> this is the season where Fatima and Mayra and Veronica are making things happen. They go, we've been wanting, tenemos esta vez a, a muchos de los que le hemos estado pidiendo por mucho tiempo. But she made it. See why she's an award-winning podcaster? Este, um, thank you so much, Marisa, for, for making the time to share thank this moment with you, us. Thank you, of course. Course, you guys finally got me here. <laughs> Logrado. Okay. Superado. <laughs> Superado. Bueno, muchísimas gracias. And we'll, we'll see you hopefully next time. Yes. Soon. See you guys Again. around the barrio. Andale pues. Nos vemos. Eso ha sido todo en Empoderate de Chicanos por la Causa. Hasta la próxima.